Hi folks, first video for a couple of weeks at least. Well, my internet was turned off on the 21st of December. Well, because BT were up doing the people upstairs doing their new uh, BT fiber. Well, unbeknownst to me or BT, the people who did it changed my phone number. Well, put my line on a different phone number, basically. They didn't have to touch my line at all, but they did. So they changed the phone number. So therefore I had no internet. And the BT phone number I, I've been using for all that time over the past, what, two to three years? Was suddenly not the right number. But of course, every time I rang it, it was come up saying, our line is really busy, please try later. Bye-bye. And it ended. So when I looked online, it showed on Google when it said test your signal in this area. So I did that and it come up saying, uh, BT Broadband is down in your area. Yeah, because BT, you use ADHL or something. Um, it was something like that, because they use that for their broadband. They don't, provide the, they don't provide the broadband themselves. Someone else does. And those people are having problems. So with everything going on, you're thinking, well, that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> it was only when I then eventually thought, Let's see if BT have got another number then. Because I keep trying to phone this number. That ain't working. So let's see if there's another number. There was an 0800 number. So I phoned them. And it works out that all the while there was no BT issue in this area at all. And when they eventually set some, sent someone around, that person found out that the number was wrong. That the number had been changed. So, yeah. Not as good. That's why there have been no videos. For that amount of time, because I had no internet to put videos on. So, there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> then again, not really anything to say. But basically, um, yeah. I had a visit from the people who have the docks. That was on the 21st, same day, actually, that my internet was turned off. And they said to me, uh, they had some documentation saying that I've got three weeks to appeal. Otherwise, the ownership of the docks goes over to them. And they will then sell the docks. But they would then give me the compensation. I'm thinking, excuse me? You would then give me... Okay, you were giving the compensation that you sell the dogs for. Which would be basically nothing. So I lose my dogs, but I get a couple of quid. Oh, yeah, cushy, bring it on. <laughs> Bloody idiots. Why would I want that, you dozy sods? Um, anyway, so, of course, the lady who came over said, look, I'm really, really sorry that it's happening right now, just before Christmas, obviously... That limits the amount of time you have to do anything. She said that she said to her boss, yeah, can we leave it till after um, the new year to do it? Because then he wouldn't have his full three weeks. And his boss said, no, it has to be done now. So she said, look, I'm really, really sorry. But, you know, I was told that I have to do it now. So, okay, well, then. So I was initially intending on appealing. And then... No, I then realised that, no, I'm not going to appeal. It was very early on, it's about uh, probably around the 23rd, I realised, no. I'm not going to, because for the first two days, all I was focused on is that they're trying to take my dogs away from me. That was it. Because, you know, if there is a court case, that court case isn't even up, so I've not been found guilty of anything. So how can they legally take my dogs away from me before there's even a court case? That's what I was thinking the first couple of days. Then I started thinking, well, if the court case is going to be in a year or two years' time because of COVID and that sort of stuff, because of the restrictions, well, actually, let's get it right. It's not because of COVID. It's because of the way the governments are abusing their position and spreading fear with regards to COVID. Yeah. Anyway, that's a different issue. So... You know, I spent a couple of days thinking about it from that point, point of view, about what's best for the dogs, and it's like, well, I can't appeal. Yeah, if I was guaranteed that the court case should be held in a couple of months, then I would appeal. I would appeal that, and I would keep the dogs at the kennel, at the kennels for that amount of time. But the reality is, 
is that I can't guarantee that in any way, shape or form. So it wouldn't be right for me to appeal, meaning my dogs have to be kept in kennels. They're basically separated from each other and separated from me anyway. So wouldn't it be better for me to just say, let them go to new homes? Yes, they're not coming back to me. If God isn't going to bring them back to me, then let them go to new homes. Let them go now. Because can I guarantee that even if I'm not guilty, can I guarantee I'm not found guilty in the court? No. No, I can't. So therefore, it could go to court and I could be found guilty anyway. And they'd have to be rehomed then. But I'd just be making them stay in kennels for another year or two before that happens, which is... A pretty nasty bastard thing for me to do, really. Especially if I love the dogs. It's a really sick and evil thing for me to do. You know, because am I putting them first, by opinion? No. So, that three weeks ended today. Yeah, you know, so, okay. Yeah. In, the, the reality is, the, the, I mean, basically, over the last two weeks, it would have been interesting to have done videos because what God has been showing me and telling me over the last two weeks was quite interesting. God had brought me to the point of realising that I, I basically have, I have no power, I have no ability whatsoever, even with the best of my knowledge and wisdom and understanding, I have no ability whatsoever to make the right decision. Because I can't see what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done. The only person who can see that is God. So, right, cool. Um, the only power that I have is the power that God will give me. Yep, cool, get that. <laughs> and God then told me about uh, a week ago, it was. Yeah, I, this is that uh, basically I'm now full of lack. Yeah, I've mentioned in videos before about lack and how lack is really where sin comes from. The lack of this, the lack of that, and trying to fulfil lack. Now, I had lack in certain areas before, but I was never full of lack. And yet when I became into a situation where I had nothing, I was now full of lack, which was nothing I'd ever experienced before. So that was interesting as well. Um... Yeah. I mean, pretty much my understanding of you know, what needs to be done to develop relationship with God is developing. Um, well, last night I understood. I, it just suddenly, I just understood that you know, all of... Yeah, when I've done videos out here and in uh, Stinky Woods and places like that, when I've been doing the walks and talks and expressing my frustration at what's happening and what my frustration at waiting, my frustration at what God isn't doing, and me challenging God on these things and me querying and me questioning, that's working your relationship out. That's working my relationship out with God. That's developing relationship with Father. That's what all of that is. Even all this stuff with regards to the dogs is developing relationship with Father. Yeah, trying to walk in faith and then when you're walking in something that isn't God and you fall and you go to God about it, that's developing your relationship with Father. It might be dealing with the difficult things, but it's still trying to deal with things. It's going to Father about your relationship with Him and trying to deal with that stuff. Very important. But basically, yeah. The way we're taught by religious churches, as in the Church of England and all that sort of stuff, is that you should be on your knees when you pray, and your hands should be together, your eyes closed, blah, blah, blah. Right? The way we're taught by charismatic churches, your head should be down and your eyes closed when you pray. But as a son, nah, none of that applies. Not in any way, shape or form. None of that applies. When you pray to God, you should be talking to God as I'm talking to you. In exactly the same way. Just have a conversation. That conversation doesn't have to go both ways. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you think you're hearing from God? No. <laughs> no. 
you want to hear from God, yes, but most of the time you don't. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you don't. Very difficult understanding when you do and when you don't, but again, that's all part of building relationship. Of course it is. I realised something else about church. I realised something else about yeah, what, 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 what we're in now. And that the charismatic church is basically... Well, put it this way. When the Lord came down, we went from a point where the only way that God was in this world was through the Ark of the Covenant. But that had been lost. Somehow. Or God had taken that away, either way. It had been lost or God had taken it away. That was the understanding. So now, we have a new Ark called Mary. And God is then brought into the world through Mary. And now God is with us through the Son of God. So it's the beginnings of relationship. It's beginnings of the understanding that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That's the beginning of relationship with the Father. But therefore, the church that came out of that is a church for babies, basically infants. Teaching infants how to pray, teaching infants, you know, who they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing now as this new creation. And that they are a new creation. You know, it's baby Christianity. But, ah, let's change that. Because this is another point. A lot of people think it's called Christianity. It's not. The reason why it's not called Christianity is because this is another thing of the mistake of the church. Because it's called Christianity, the whole purpose is to keep you focused on being a worshipper, a follower, and a believer in Christ. So everything is focused on Christ. Everything is focused on the Word of God. Because that's their understanding. That's what they were created to do. So everything is about keeping you focused in that. That's Christianity. That's a follower of Christ. The problem is, who was Christ a follower of? It was Father. Christ did as he saw the Father do. That's what he said. I do as I saw the Father do. We're supposed to do likewise. As adopted children of God, we're supposed to be as the Lord was, which was a follower of the Father. I do as I see the Father do. We're not supposed to do as we see the Son do, because the Son is simply doing as he has seen the Father do. We're supposed to do likewise. We're supposed to do as we see the Father do. To do that, you have to develop relationship with the Father. That is where we've so far fallen down. We have not developed relationship with Father, not yet. That's where we are right now, you see. We're in this situation right now where we're developing relationship with Father, so we can see how the Father does, and then we can do as the Father does. We can do as we see the Father do. So, about uh, ten days ago, God told me to wait and see. No, he didn't. Sorry. Uh, keep getting this wrong. God told me to sit and wait. Which is basically the same as wait and see. But he said sit and wait. That's more of a precise thing that I heard was sit and wait. Now, about uh, four days ago, I was struggling quite a bit. And um, I sent some messages to Rob and Bianca. I then got a phone call from Rob. We had a good phone call, actually, over that time. And basically, he's been told the same by God. Pretty much. Not quite the same wording, but pretty much to do the same. To just sit and wait. Yeah, don't try and do anything. Just let God do. And so now it's a case of saying, okay. That's the thing. I mean, even, right, the point of building your relationship with God, most of that is going to be done by God, not you. 
you're working out in the sense that uh, what you've got in, if there's any angst in you, if there's any struggle in you, get it out, let it out, whatever way works best for you. But give it to God. Speak to God about all this stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. We do that because, well, in the end, that's all part of building that relationship with Father, you see. You go to Father, you give all this stuff to Father. And you speak to him about it. And it's not so obvious that God will speak to you, but will he help you to deal with it? Yeah. How he helps you to deal with it, well, there are different ways that you can do that, but really that's between you and him. So, put it this way, at the moment, am I concerned about what's going on? No, not really. Not really. I, there's a lot of stuff going through my head at times, some good, some bad. That's the reality. That's how it works, isn't it? Really, that's how your mind works. And you are supposed to give your, your body, your mind, your soul, and your spirit to God. How? It's different. That's a different thing completely, how to do that. One second, we've got someone coming here. One sec. Well, I've got to see doggies. So, there you go. It's always good when you get to see doggies. When you get to say hello to doggies, always a wonderful thing. Hello trees, how you doing? Well, they seem to be doing okay, don't they now? Well, these trees are thankfully, uh, they have their roots in deep enough so they don't fall down a little bit of a breeze, like uh, the ones that stinky woods do. So, yeah. Now, as I say, look, put it this way. At the moment, yeah, even like the conversation I have with Rob, I was like saying, yeah, the problem is, I see you've got a lot of people talking about being a son of God, but they would never, they're not, not actually trying to teach us how to be that. They're saying that we are that, but not teach us how to be that. And that's the thing right now that we are, you know, where the big struggle is at the moment. You know, how do you give your body to God? Because it's a physical thing. It's not like, you know, how do you give your spirit? Because your spirit, God is spirit, so giving spirit to spirit, that's easy. Yeah. But your mind also is a problem because how do you give that to God? <laughs> That's a big yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one right now. I don't. I'm gonna have to just see how God does things and what God does and you know, so it's up to it's up to Father to help me to be able to do that because I haven't got a clue how to do it. You know, so I will share. I've got internet back on now, so I can share what happens. Whatever happens, I will share that with you. Well, so there you go. It's not a bad day. I thought I'd come out for a walk because I was going to have something to eat. I'm not doing any exercising today. Oh, at the moment, um, my membership with the gym has ended. I ended that. It was simply a case of I just couldn't afford it. Yeah, at one point, they tried to take the membership out and there was no money in the bank. So yeah, <laughs> that was a problem. So it's like, right, cancel the membership for now. I've got all the stuff indoors, I can just do it indoors. So for now, I just do it indoors. Simple, really. Oh, last night, yeah, that's the point. I started doing back again about uh, two weeks ago. I haven't done back for a long, long time. And so my previous best, I think, for back was about 110 kilograms. Because I've never been that bothered about doing deadlift. Never been that bothered about it. Done little bits here and there, but... Eh. That's always been my attitude to deadlift. Eh, whatever. <laughs> See a lot of people do it, but they, they can often injure themselves by doing it. So I, uh, I don't really bother that much with it. Not really. I do more reps than trying to go heavy. So I thought, well, this time, let's see what I can do. So I think on the second occasion I tried, I got to 130. So I was like, well, OK, let's try it and get 250. That would be the max. I mean, that's fine. 150 can be the max. So, like on the uh, 
that last week on Friday, I tried again. I got to 140. But because I did it where I did 130 quite a few times, I even did a double lift, as in you lift, go down, lift again. And did quite a lot of 130, then did 135, then did 140. By the time I tried 150, I had nothing left. So it's like, right, okay. The plan was to go on Sunday and try and do the, um, the arms and the shoulders with 30k. Well, couldn't do that anyway. <laughs> Tried. And again, nothing there in that area at all. This time around, no. So I thought, okay. First of all, I thought, okay, let's test it back. How's that feeling? Okay, it's feeling fine. Really, feeling absolutely fine. No problem at all. I mean, I can bend, I can stretch, I can do all that. No achy breaky in the back at all, so cool. So this was Sunday yesterday. So I'm like, okay, let's go for the 150 then. Let's try. So I did 120, then 140. Warmed up first, obviously, then 120, then 140, and then I just added two fives to make 150. 150, I tried two times, couldn't do it. Third time, I just realised, we'll use legs as well. that help. <laughs> yeah, use legs as well. Got, got to do that. <laughs> Heavy weight for me, so use legs. And then, yeah, got it up. No problem. Tried again, couldn't do it the second time, but got it the first time. So, there you go. Max is done now. That's it. That's what I wanted to do. So now we're back, really. We're back, chest. Um, back, chest, upper back. So lower back, upper back, chest. It's just reps now. It's not trying to find the max now. I've done that. There's birdies. Yes. Pheasants, are they? Pheasants? I think they're. Big tractor, so I'm waiting for that to go first. Because obviously that's gonna be a, I'm gonna be in the way of that thing if I try and get in the car. So, yeah. That's it, they're gone now. Cock up. I don't know what they're transporting. No idea at all. Took me a while to get to that word, transporting, didn't it? I don't know what they're trans... and then sporting. <laughs> I had to think of the second part of that word, really. Anyway, so there's your video. First video for quite a while. Yeah. So that means I won't be going out at night now to the gym for a while, at least. Well, it depends because, you know, I'm getting a phone call from BT because they cut my internet off for that amount of time, which is quite a long time. Really. It's about 18 days. Um, you know, they're going to look to offer me some sort of compensation or something like that. So, if I can get either reduced price on Sky Sports and um, BT Sports, then I can go to the gym again, because I'll have more money. Or I just have the sports removed, in which case I can still go to the gym again, because I'll have more money. So that would be the option. Either have the sports taken away, or reduced by half price, because of this. It would be one or the other. Yeah, so, I don't really care which. Because that product was denied me for a certain amount of time because of what their engineers had done. So, there you go. Reality is, I'd be quite happy to have the sports removed, really. Yeah. Well, because over that Christmas period, there was a lot of uh, football games on that I didn't get to see. And it didn't bother me, particularly. Not really. I really didn't care. <laughs> so... There you go. Right, I think that well, there is a lot more things to care about right now. So, there you go. You take care, God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.